An official Mario level editor was something Mario fans had been dreaming of for years, and in 2015, we got it. Super Mario Maker. For many of us, Nintendo finally allowing us to build our own Mario levels and make things you'd never seen in a mainline game was truly a dream come true. But as great as it was to get an official, robust and highly accessible Mario level editor, the concept of a Mario level editor dates long before 2015. From Flash games to modern tools, there were plenty of fan-made editors prior to Mario Maker, with some being arguably better than Mario Maker in many ways and are still relevant today in one form or another. So without further ado, let's delve into the world of Mario level editors before Mario Maker. So to start things off, we're going to go over a couple of Flash games. You probably already know what Flash games are, I mean, what else for school computers for? But in case you don't, these were games made using the Adobe Flash software and they could be played directly in your web browser, and they were especially popular throughout the 2000s and early 2010s. There were tons of these games hosted across all sorts of websites, and due to Flash's sheer popularity, it inevitably brought us tons and tons of unofficial Mario games. Some of these games went far enough to include level editors, and due to Flash games being just a website away, it likely made them the most accessible way to create Mario levels at the time. And as I said, we're going to go over two of them, those being Super Mario Flash 1 and 2, with its sequel being what I personally played back in the day. So. Super Mario Flash, oh wait, that's the wrong one, Super Mario Flash is essentially a clone of the All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros, with a few Mario Bros 3 and World elements thrown in for good measure. It began development way back in 2005, at least according to this unsighted fandom article, back when the game looked like that. But by 2007 the game had evolved quite a bit. Not only do you actually play as Mario now, but it also added what we're all here for, a level editor. Now as you might expect, it's not quite as feature-packed as Mario Maker, lacking many enemies, items and obnoxious sound effects. But for a free Flash game from the late 2000s, it's good for what it is. For example, it includes nearly all enemies from Mario Bros 1 alongside Boo, Thwomp and Dry Bones. There's various block types including Mario World's Flip Block and the Bane of My Existence, some power-ups, moving platforms, there's nothing too crazy, but there's definitely enough stuff here to keep you busy for a while. Unlike Mario Maker, ground tiles don't automatically merge together Together, so you need to manually switch between placing floor tiles, wall tiles, corners and so on. Although this does give you a bit more control over how your level can look, it does make building a bit more tedious in Mario Maker. This was basically the norm for these fan-made editors though. Also unlike Mario Maker, ground tiles, backgrounds and music aren't tied to specific themes, so you can mix and match them however you want, for better or for Timmy. The warping system for pipes and doors is similarly flexible. Sure, pipes and doors can only go one way which kinda stinks, but if you wanted you could link a door up to a pipe, make a door go to a sub area, or even have a pipe hidden in the ground as you can basically make anything into a pipe. The dev exit possibilities are near endless. Now, all these features are great and all, how good is the editor itself? Like, is it actually intuitive? For the most part, yeah. You just bring up this menu, choose an object, close out of it and click away. Pretty straightforward stuff. There are other options in this menu, like switching music or going over to edit the sub area, or, or sorry, my bad, bonus zone. But overall, the editor is fairly simple and straightforward. There are a couple of quirks with it, but I'll get to them in a bit. Once you're done crafting your masterpiece, you can export it as a level code, basically just a big string of numbers. You could just save this locally in like a text document, or you could go and share it somewhere online for others to enjoy or suffer. The website this game was hosted on had a whole section dedicated to sharing these level codes. Just imagine if Mario Maker's course world was styled like an old internet forum and everything was in Comic Sans. Oh, and you got publicly shamed if you made a bad level too, can't forget that. The site seems to be down low with whatever this mess is in its place. Now as you can imagine for an old Flash game, Super Mario Flash isn't without its flaws. Like gameplay wise there are some weird bugs and inconsistencies between it and the official games, such as jumps always having a consistent height. And in the editor you can only place one tile per click, so if you wanted to fill in a big chunk of ground <laughs> it'll take some time. But on the whole, Super Mario Flash's editor is decent enough. It may not have a ton of features, and some more quality of life additions would have been nice, but for a simple web-based Mario level editor from 2007, I think it served its purpose just fine. But man, wouldn't it be great if it had slopes, and Yoshi, and was found around Super Mario World, and had a number 2 in the title, would you look at that? Yup, there exists a sequel to Super Mario Flash featuring a new and improved level editor. It's clearly built off the original, with similar UI and still showing some of its quirks like the one tile per click thing, but it does add heaps of new stuff, and who doesn't love new stuff? 
There's now water, semi-solids, tons of new enemies, checkpoints, those weird pink triangle things, I could go on. Mario's got some fancy new moves too, like sliding down slopes and carrying certain objects, not to mention the addition of the Cape Feather and Yoshi. And if the strictly horizontal scrolling in the first game ever felt a bit limiting, well now you can adjust the level height, allowing for the possibility of more expansive and exploration based levels. It does kinda suck that you can only set the level height upon creating your level, which was also the case for the level length in the first game, but this is still a pretty big step up from the original. There's just so much more to mess with here, and the fact that a fairly extensive Mario level editor was just a website away in 2011 was seriously cool. But you know what isn't seriously cool? The fact that they removed Luigi from the sequel like, what did my boy do to deserve that? Now with the death of Flash Player at the end of 2020 and Mario Flash 1 and 2's website turning into graphic design is my passion, it's a bit trickier to please games than it once was. But if you're curious, both Mario Flash 1 and 2 are on archive.org and can be played there via the Ruffle Flash emulator. The sequel is quite buggy from my experience though, so for it I recommend downloading the game's SWF file and running it on the Newgrounds player, a standalone application for running Flash content. Alright, that's enough of Flash games. I'd say it's now time to move on to the Meteor stuff, so let me introduce you to Super Mario Bros X. This is a fun game that released back in 2009, but the version I'll be using is from 2013. It combines elements from several 2D Mario games, and surprise surprise, it features a level editor, and a pretty powerful one at that. The sheer amount of objects, tools, and customization options on offer is beyond anything we've seen so far, and even beyond Mario Maker 2 in many ways. Like for instance, you could place down a question mark block but have its surface be slippery because why not? Then have it contain a Goomba, or Naked Koopa, or Link from The Legend of Zelda, or have it change the background, the music, and summon a bunch of toads all at once? Yeah, I'd like to see Mario Maker try that. Mario Bros X has elements from all across the classic Super Mario Bros trilogy, Super Mario World, and even a few things from some non-Mario games like Zelda and Metroid. Oh, and you can't forget they've got the Ice Flower as well. Does Mario Maker 2 have the Ice Flower? I think not. The majority of these elements have several adjustable properties, like whether tiles should be slippery, invisible, or contain, well, just about anything you can think of. And this applies to most solid tiles in the game, not just your typical question mark blocks or bricks. Items, enemies, and certain other objects are known as NPCs in the editor, and they too have a bunch of properties you can modify like movement styles or whatever they spawn within something like a bubble, egg, or even buried in the ground Mario Bros 2 style. The amount of customization and control Mario Bros X offers is great. With all these properties to adjust, you can really fine tune each element in your level to act exactly how you want. And with the event system, things can get even more advanced. Events can be triggered in various ways, like stomping on an enemy or hitting a particular block. And they can cause all sorts of things to occur, from playing sound effects to toggling on or off layers of objects to even triggering other events. You can even go as far as automating player movement with them. So couple that with their ability to display text and then you've essentially got yourself custom cutscenes. So yeah, the level of the in Super Mario Bros X is pretty cool. It's not perfect of course, like the lack of an undo feature is a bit strange and it would have benefited from some more keyboard shortcuts, but it's still a really good editor, especially for the time. Now, Super Mario Bros X doesn't just feature a level editor, it actually includes a whole world map editor too, allowing you to create your own worlds or episodes that contain a bunch of interconnected levels. Yup, you can make your own Mario fan game within a Mario fan game. It's miles better than Mario Maker 2's World Maker, as you build with smaller, more precise tiles instead of these big slabs of land. If Mario Bros X's World Maker is Lego, then Mario Maker 2's would be Duplo. And you're not constrained to just a single screen to build on, so if you wanted to make a big, expansive open world with tons of levels, go for it. Oh yeah, and secret exits are a thing, so alternative or secret routes are possible. The only real thing the world editor lacks is being able to link up multiple worlds together. You've just got this one overworld per episode, but you could always just build separate parts of the map far away from each other and link them up via pipes, so it's not that big of a deal. These worlds, or rather episodes, are basically just folders saved on your computer containing the world's map, all your levels, and even custom music or textures if you want. So you can simply share it by plopping the folder in a zip file and uploading it anywhere on the internet. Okay, so Super Mario Bros X is great for making levels and worlds, but does any of that matter if the gameplay isn't good? Well, it is good. The physics don't feel 100% accurate to the classic 2D Mario games, but they're very 
very close. And there's all the moves you'd expect, like jumping, sprinting, throwing, climbing and whatnot. And there's also five playable characters, four of which being the ones from Mario Bros 2, playing how you'd expect. With the addition of Link, because why not? Link's a cool guy. He's got a very unique playstyle, as he's capable of melee attacks, has different power-up effects, and certain items change appearance specifically for him, like coins turning into rupees, which is neat. Now this whole time I've been playing Super Mario Bros. X version 1.3.0.1 from 2013. This version is basically the exact same as version 1.3 from 2010, except for some graphical and audio differences. But the reason I bring this up is because 1.3 was the final version created by the fan game's original developer, Andrew Spinks, who a few months later began development on a little game you may or may not have heard of called Terraria. Yeah, you heard me right. The creator of Terraria also made Super Mario Bros. X. Although he abandoned Mario Bros. X by 2011, the game has continued to live on throughout the years through fan-made continuations like version 1.3.0.1 and the newer and far more ambitious Super Mario Bros. X 2, which was last updated just February of this year, adding plenty of new content such as items, enemies, tiles, characters, and even support for custom scripts if you want to get really technical. The editor has also been completely replaced by what's known as the Moon Dust Editor, featuring a redone interface and several new tools and keyboard shortcuts to improve the building experience. The last official version of the game was even decompiled a few years ago, and with the source code in hand, people were able to port the game to other platforms like the 3DS, PS Vita, Wii, and Switch. Like, how cool is that? Some platforms are definitely more stable than others, and the editor is completely different to the original version and doesn't have the most intuitive controls. But regardless, the fact that it's possible to play this classic fan game designed for Windows on official Nintendo hardware is simply amazing. So clearly Super Mario Bros. X is far from dead and still very relevant today, despite the original developer abandoning it over a decade ago. Moving on from Super Mario Bros. X and fan games as a whole, there's a whole other side to creating custom Mario levels I haven't even talked about yet, and that's of course, the wonderful world of modding. As you're probably aware, people have been tinkering around with the official Mario games for ages, importing custom textures, music, characters, and other things sure to send a shiver down Miyamoto's spine. This, of course, includes custom levels too, which thanks to the existence of fan-made level editors for specific Mario games, anyone with a PC can make, and it's been a pretty popular thing to do long before Mario Maker was a thing. Now one of these level editors for an official game is Reggie, named after the big man himself. This program allows you to create custom levels for new Super Mario Bros. Wii, and it was released in March of 2010, only four months after the game released. Because it's an editor for a pre-existing game, you have access to basically every item, enemy, tile, background and whatnot Nintendo made for Mario Bros. Wii. Rolling hills? Check. Hidden areas within the ground? Check. Those massive king bills? Yup. The entire credit sequence? Yeah, they're just an object apparently. Because your custom level can contain anything from any existing level, that also includes all the wacky stuff from Toad Houses, the credits, and enemy ambushes, because they're all technically levels too. So for example, instead of ending off your level with a boring old flagpole, perhaps you could end it off with a bunch of Toad balloons being popped instead. Do expect some jank when using these more obscure objects though. Reggie also lets you adjust all sorts of object properties, modify the level's camera settings, create sub-areas, and even custom events somewhat like Mario Bros. X. As long as Nintendo had it implemented in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you can mess with it here in Reggie. Major props to everyone who took the time to reverse engineer the game and figure out its level format to make this all possible. Making levels in Reggie is fairly easy with its nice and organised interface, easily scalable tiles, and handy keyboard shortcuts. There isn't any undo or redo feature though which is a bit weird, but the same can be said for every pre-Mario Maker editor I've covered so far. But Reggie does have one notable downside that wasn't an issue with any of the previous editors, and that's playtesting. Reggie isn't a level editor integrated within New Super Mario Bros. Wii, it's its own separate application. So instead of simply entering play mode, you need to load up the game with the level patched in on an emulator every single time you want to test out your level. This can be a bit tedious if you're regularly playtesting, like every few minutes, but that's just the nature of external level editors, rather than a photo of Reggie in particular. Now as for sharing your levels, you could just upload the level file somewhere online, but ideally you'd want to make a patch that can be used on real hardware using this homebrew application called Revolution, especially if you've made a bunch of levels or a full on hack. 
Revolution patches aren't something Reggie can just generate for you though, so you need to manually set up an XML file with specific formatting and whatnot, but I'm not going to bore you with that. I should probably mention that the version of Reggie I've been showing is the latest original version from 2011. Just like Marlboro's X, there exist newer branches of Reggie from other developers such as Reggie Updated. Apparently older versions of Reggie have security risks, so uh, you probably should stick to the newer stuff such as Reggie Updated instead. Alright, we've got one last fan-made Mario level editor to cover, but before we do, I want to talk about something that's actually official, the Mario vs Donkey Kong games. Nearly all of the games in this series following the first instalment feature level editors. Starting with March of the Minis from 2006, complete with online functionality for sharing and playing levels. Well, they used to. These games play very differently to traditional 2D Mario games, as you're not running and jumping about as the main man himself, but rather you're guiding several mini Mario toys towards a goal as they walk about on their own instead. Because of this, you can't make any traditional platformer styled levels as you could in the fan made editors we've looked at, but hey, they're official Mario games that include level editors prior to Mario Maker, so I think they're still worth mentioning. I don't actually own any of the Mario vs DK games, hence why none of the footage is mine, so I can't really say how good the editors are, but from what I can tell, they look pretty intuitive and user friendly. They've got auto merging tiles, undo and redo, clean UI, but they are official Nintendo products after all, so it isn't exactly a surprise they are polished and well designed. Also, the original Mario vs Donkey Kong, the one game in the series that's actually a platformer and recently got a remake on Switch, was planned to have a level editor during development, but it got scrapped for whatever reason. I'd assume this would have felt closer to Mario Maker than the other games, considering it's a platformer, but probably still quite different due to the game's slower pace and focus on puzzle solving. Not to mention this would have been on the Game Boy Advance, so there'd probably only be level sharing locally between GBAs if anything. It would have been nice if the remake brought back the editor, and that would have justified its fairly high price tag a lot more, but oh well. Alright, now it's time for the final editor of the video, and what better way to end it off with one of the earliest and most influential Mario level editors out there, Lunar Magic. Lunar Magic is basically the Reggie equivalent for Super Mario World, allowing you to create custom levels for said game. This is by far the oldest level editor in this video, initially releasing all the way back in September of 2000. Yeah, that's right, this thing's nearly 24 years old, and the same developer who released it all the way back then is still updating it to this day, which is super impressive. Anyway, for the sake of this video, I'll be using the latest version prior to the release of Mario Maker, version 2.32 from 2015. Like Reggie, this is an editor for an existing Mario game, so you can use essentially anything Nintendo implemented into Super Mario World for your levels. The enemies, the items, the power-ups are all here, with an asterisk. Only certain sets of graphics for tiles, enemies and whatnot can be loaded at a time for each level, I assume due to limitations of the Super Nintendo. Objects that don't have their correct graphics loaded will be hidden by default in the editor, but if you try to get around that and place them anyway, then yeah, that's not right. So that's something to bear in mind. Along with the relatively low on-screen sprite limit too, which again isn't a fault of Lunar Magic. As for actually building your levels, basic things like placing down or deleting tiles is pretty straightforward. There's also tile scaling like in Red J and a bunch of handy shortcuts and tools like copy pasting, multi selecting, and even the fabled undo and redo as of an update in 2014. But with that said, Lunar Magic is by far the most complex editor so far, capable of modifying many different aspects of the game. And due to this, there are tons of different buttons, dialogue boxes, and settings for configuring all sorts of things, with some of which not being terribly obvious how to use properly, so navigating around the editor for the first time can be a bit overwhelming. However, there is extensive documentation built right into the editor that can be easily accessed, so you can just head over there if you're having trouble. Or if you're more of the I'm not reading all that kind of guy, you could just get out a YouTube tutorial or something. Now I just said Lunar Magic can modify many aspects of the game, not level, and that's because you can do so much more than just make custom levels. Lunar Magic also lets you edit the world map, edit the title screen, modify dialogue, text, change the colour palettes used by sprites, and even edit the sprites themselves. Lunar Magic is truly the Swiss army knife of Mario World modding. Unlike Reggie where you can only edit individual level files, Lunar Magic can modify the game's ROM directly, making playtesting quite a bit faster. You can even press F4 to instantly boot up the ROM in an emulator if you give Lunar Magic the path to it. 
Because you're working with a ROM, you obviously can't just go uploading it online because that's illegal. So to share your hack, you can create a patch file containing only the data that was modified from the original game, so any custom levels, graphics and so on. Lunamagic has the option for creating IPS patches right in the file menu. However, BPS formatted patches are generally preferred these days, which Lunamagic can't create. So for those and other formats, you need to get a dedicated patching application. By the way, can we just talk about how influential Lunar Magic is? For over two decades, this program has spawned countless ROM hacks, and although all the fanmade editors in this video have certainly made their mark on the internet, I don't think any have had as big an impact as Lunar Magic. Like, you've heard the word Kaizo, right? You know, the word we associate with brutally difficult and precise levels or game mods? Well, the word itself doesn't mean extreme or hard or precise or anything you'd expect. Instead, it's a Japanese word that roughly means reorganization or modification. Now, Kaizo Mario World is an old ROM hack or modification or reorganization of Super Mario World, known for its incredibly hard levels. And due to its popularity, everyone started using the word Kaizo for any stupidly difficult Mario hack and eventually Mario Maker levels. Even spreading to games outside of the Mario franchise. And without Lunar Magic, Kaizo Mario World and this newfound meaning for the word Kaizo probably would have never existed. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this look into what you could call the original Mario Makers. Personally, I find it fascinating seeing all the different ways people went about making Mario level editors before there was one obvious reference and eventually two. And although I didn't go over every pre-Mario Maker editor out there, I think I've managed to cover quite a diverse range. As I said right at the start of the video, many of these editors are still relevant today despite the existence of Mario Maker in its sequel, likely due to the greater freedom and extra features they offer that Mario Maker 1 and 2 simply lack, as well as their evolutions in more recent years and long-lasting communities that are still active to this day. Super Mario Maker 1 and 2 are both incredible games, don't get me wrong. They're by far the most user-friendly, polished and robust Mario editors out there, and I've spent countless hours across them both. But many of these fan-made editors just do a lot of things better. And with that said, the video's come to an end, so thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.